Messerschmitt, P. 1092A through E. Starting in 1943, a series of multi-purpose aircraft were designed under the designation MEP-1092. Five basic designs were submitted. The 1092A fighter with one turbojet, the 1092B interceptor with one rocket engine, the 1092C high-speed bomber with two pulse jets, 1092D heavy fighter with two turbojets, and 1092E two-seat night fighter slash heavy fighter. Other designs included roles for long-range fighters, torpedo bombers, and dive bombers. The 1092A was a small plane. A single Yonkers Yumo 004C turbojet was mounted on the bottom of the fuselage and was fed by an air intake beneath the nose of the fuselage. The wings were basically the outer sections of an ME-262, exhibited a small amount of sweep back, and were mounted mid-fuselage. A V-tail, or butterfly tail, provided lateral control, and a tricycle landing gear arrangement was chosen. A single pilot sat in a cockpit located in the middle of the fuselage, and all-around vision was excellent. Armament consisted of two MK-103 30mm cannons in the aircraft's nose. Span, 27 feet 6 inches. Length, 29 feet 6 inches. Height, 8 feet 3 inches. Wing area, 190 square feet. Loaded weight, 8,818 pounds. Maximum wing loading, 67.5 pounds per square foot. The P-1092B was to be an interceptor. It was similar in appearance to the 1092A, with the main exception of the propulsion method. Whereas the 1092A used a Yonkers Yumo turbojet, the 1092B had a rocket motor, probably a Walter HWK 109-509A rocket engine, located in the rear fuselage. Tail unit and landing gear was also similar to the 1092A, but the armament was upgraded to two MK-103 30mm cannons and two MK-108 30mm cannons. Although none of the MEP-1092A through E designs went any further than the drawing board, a whole new series of designs, also under the P-1092 designation, were begun just a few months later. Messerschmitt MEP-1092-2 The P-1092-2 was to have two versions, one with an extended wing and one without. Again, outer wing sections from the ME-262. A more conventional tail unit was designed and was mounted on a boom under which the single Yonkers Yumo 004C with 2,237 pounds of thrust exhausted. The tail unit resembled the Messerschmitt 262 tail. The landing gear arrangement was of a tricycle type, with the main gear retracting inwards, and the forward gear retracting to the rear. Armament consisted of two MK-103 30mm cannon and two MG-151 15mm cannon. All guns were mounted in the forward fuselage on either side of the air intake. Span. 25 feet 5 inches, with extended wing, 32 feet 9 inches, length, 26 feet 6 inches, height, 11 feet 10 inches, wing area, 136 square feet for the normal wing, 155 square feet for the extended wing, aspect ratio, 4.73 to 1 on the normal wing, 6.92 to 1 on the extended wing. Top speed, 578 miles per hour. Messerschmitt P-1092-3 The ME P-1092-3 design moved the cockpit to the rear, where it was fared into a single vertical fin. The air intake was now divided into two intakes, located beneath the nose, and fed the single Yonkers Yumo 003C jet engine. The landing gear remained the same, more or less, and with the forward fuselage now unoccupied, 
a heavier armament of four MK-108 30mm cannons could be concentrated in the nose, and the problem of poor visibility would have prevented this aircraft from achieving production status. Span, 30 feet 9 inches. Length, 26 feet 6 inches. Height, 11 feet 9 inches. Wing area, 136 square feet. Aspect ratio, 7 to 1. Messerschmitt P-1092-4 The MEP-92 design was further refined with the P-1092-4 design. The fuselage remained similar to that of the MEP-1092-3, but the cockpit was moved to the extreme forward fuselage, which afforded the pilot a much better view. As in the previous design, the wing was swept back at 18 degrees. The wing, tail, and control systems were mostly borrowed from the ME-262 design. The same air intake and turbojet remained from the previous 1092-3 design, although the cockpit now took up much of the space in the nose where the weapons had been previously mounted, there was still room for four MK-108 30mm cannon, these located further aft in the fuselage sides. Messerschmitt P-1092-5 This final design of the ME P-1092 series was another refinement of the previous P-1092-4 design. The cockpit was again moved, this time back to its original location, from the first P-1092-A design, above the wings. Again, the wing and tail were taken from the ME-262, and the air intake and jet engine remained from the previous 1092 designs. Armament consisted of four MK-108 30mm cannon located on the fuselage sides. The P-1092 series of designs went no further than the drawing board. However, the design work and performance calculations formed the basis of later ME P-1106 and even the P-1101 projects. Messerschmitt P-1101-28 The MEP-1101-28 was a fast bomber and destroyer with a crew of two and powered by two Heinkelhurth HE-011 turbojets located in the wing route, having a leading edge sweep of almost 40 degrees. An interesting feature of the design was that the main wheels were to retract inwards to rest vertically in the fuselage between the fore and aft fuel tanks. Top speed was 565 miles per hour. Messerschmitt P-1101-99 The MEP-1101-99 was to be of all metal construction. The fuselage contained the fuel tanks and most of the armament. 2,021 gallons of fuel could be carried in the fuselage tanks. The wings were swept back at 45 degrees with four Heinkelhurth HE-011 turbojets, each developing 2,860 pounds of thrust, buried in the thickened wing roots. Each pair of turbojets were fed by an air intake in the leading edge of the wing. The main landing gear retracted inwards into the fuselage, and the front gear retracted backwards beneath the cockpit. A two-man crew sat, staggered side by side in the cockpit, which was located in the extreme nose of the aircraft. Armament consisted of one 75mm cannon in the nose and five MK-112 55mm machine cannon. Span, 50 feet 6 inches. Length, 49 feet 10 inches. Height, 16 feet 1 inch. Wing area, 506 square feet. Empty weight, 28,065 pounds. Takeoff weight, 41,072 pounds. Maximum speed, 597 miles per hour. P-1092-3 
The MEP-1101-101 featured a long tapered fuselage and was powered by four Heinkel Hearth HE-011 turbojet units, two mounted below the nose and two at the tail. Armament was to consist of four MK-108 30mm cannons in the nose plus remote-controlled turrets and a bomb load of 3,000 kilograms. The design also featured swing wings, which would allow it to land on short runways while accelerating to near supersonic speeds during interception. Span, 60 feet, 4 inches. Length, 56 feet, 1 inch. Top speed, 683 miles per hour. Messerschmitt P1101-104 The MEP1101-104 was very similar to the P1101-99, but its wing was cranked in plan form, and the four Heinkel Hearth 011 turbojets were in nacelles slung under the wings. Span, 56 feet 11 inches. Length, 59 feet 4 and a half inches. Top speed, 633 miles per hour. Yes, and of course, all of the Messerschmitt MEP-1101 bomber designs were abandoned. And I know I said in the last video that this would be the final one, but there are so many of these airplanes and I keep on falling into this rabbit hole of more and more. And part of the problem was halfway through making this series, I had to start making some of my own because there were some airplanes I knew about that, that weren't covered in the manuscript. And I kept on finding these. And the real problem is airplanes like this one. The Messerschmitt ME362. The ME362 was a pusher airplane that never ever existed. I'm talking about the design itself. This is an entirely fictitious airplane that somebody made up decades later. It also came with a completely fabricated story about the Third Reich that if I wasn't such a World War II nut, I would think this story was completely legitimate. But this design never, ever existed. By the way, you can tell whether or not I came up with any of these airplanes. Because the ones out of the manuscript, I always use the manuscript title page. On the others, I all had to make my own. I hope the next video is the final episode in this series. Talk to you then. The present tense has been used for convenience in the following contents. However, this does not mean that an aircraft is in existence or that one was ever built.